Welcome to part two of the brief life of the Formosan Communist Party. We're going to talk a little bit about the uh, end of the Formosan Communist Party, why it kind of basically was stamped out, and sort of what it believed, and kind of the aftermath. Um, where we last left off, the party had just been founded, um, founded in uh, Shanghai with some nine people. But almost immediately after the party's founding, the FCP suffered decimation from Japanese police in Shanghai and then in Formosa. Fleeing this police repression, several senior party leaders would hide in Shanghai and Japan. The Japanese Communist Party subsequently criticized this action, labeling the FCP leadership as being soft-spined intellectuals, bookworms who feared the police and treasured their soft intellectual privileges too much to organize Formosa's laborers and farmers. The JCP expelled the FCP cowards and promoted Xie Shui Hong to the Central Committee. A committed Taiwanese nationalist, Xie advocated for the FCP to establish united fronts with bourgeoisie parties sharing similar anti-imperialist goals. The CCP had followed this tactic of allying with the Kuomintang in the 1920s, a period of time called the First United Front. Xie believed that united fronts would allow the FCP to align with growing anti-Japanese sentiment amongst the native Formosan population and foment revolution and eventual independence. The FCP may start out as one of many, but over time gain dominance over its peers. Xie, for the most part, saw some early signs of progress, starting with the Taiwan Cultural Association. Founded in 1921, the Taiwan Cultural Association was founded with the goal of promoting harmony between Japanese and Formosans. Their actual goal, however, was to awaken Formosan national consciousness and create a path to eventual self-determination. The FCP found rich ground in organizing the association's younger members. Soon they would take it over from the inside, turning it into a hard-left organization. The 1920s brought a series of clashes between the capitalist Japanese elites and the native Formosan laborers. Incidents like when the Formosan governor general declared all lands without established ownership as being quote unquote condemned, handing large swaths of valuable land to Japanese corporations and landowners. This would spark tension naturally and helped with recruitment, presenting a unique opportunity for the FCP to gain real traction amongst the people. But disunity and disagreements with the CCP hampered progress. The CCP of the late 20s and early 30s disagreed with the United Front strategy. The first United Front had led to the CCP's near destruction at the hangs of Chiang Kai-shek and the Kuomintang. The second United Front would see much greater success during the Second Sino-Japanese War, but that had yet to come. The CCP strongly urged a different strategy, advocating for class struggle, and a deep focus on directly organizing the farmers and laborers. Xie, however, was no puppet of the CCP. She argued back that Formosa's political and historical conditions were different from those on the mainland, which is true, and Nationalist United Front tactics had not been given there a chance to succeed. We will never know if she was right, as the entire party never fully unified under her leadership. Members of the FCP supporting the CCP's line of thinking organized a quote-unquote party within a party, and the two factions steadily grew divided. The common turn eventually backed the CCP. Back in the United, er, I mean the Soviet Union in 1928, Stalin defeats common turn chairman Nikolai Bukharin in a power struggle and gains control over it. He directs the common turn to dump United Front strategies across the world. His thinking was that working with the bourgeoisie would only interfere with the revolution, as the bourgeoisie would invariably compromise with imperialism to protect their own little place in the existing order. Revolution would now be rooted in class struggle, in line more with the CCP's line of thinking. Thus in 1931, the Comintern reorganizes the entire FCP, expelling practically everyone, again, and essentially rebooting the franchise. The FCP will now stand for the confiscation of all imperialist enterprises and banks, amongst various other socialist demands, policies that better align it with the international class struggle goal. These policies cause alienation with the original founding members of the FCP. 
The Comintern at the same time also elevated the FCP from being the cadet branch of the JCP to being on the same level of the CCP and the JCP within the Comintern, a declaration by the Soviet Union and an acknowledgement that Formosa was a sovereign entity separate from Japan and China. The Chinese Communist Party at the time is not recorded having any issue with this arrangement of affairs. Before I close the chapter, um, I want to talk a little bit about the FCP's political beliefs at the start. To read the charter of the Formosan Communist Party is to delve into a weird alternate history, a bizarre mix of Marxist thought and anti-imperialist nationalism. The Formosan Communist Party, dominated by Xie Shui Hong, advocated for Taiwanese independence. The 1928 political thesis, first adopted in the FCP's founding meeting, establishes Formosa's history as that of the Formosan nationality. They of the Han race, who came from southern China to the island of Formosa and found themselves working under the feudal system first established by the Zheng family, Koxinga, and then perpetuated by the Qing dynasty. Japanese imperialism then brought their own form of unequal capitalism to the island, resulting in a large underclass of Formosans unable to speak for themselves and determine their own future. This leaves a situation ripe for the Formosans, led naturally by the Formosan capital Communist Party, I mean, to overthrow their imperialist overlords and rise to power. Reading it, you wonder what a fully independent but communist Form Formosan nation might have looked like. I wonder if it could ever have happened, but of course it didn't. One drawback of the FCP abandoning Xie's methods would be that the FCP could no longer hide within legitimate organizations like the Taiwan Cultural Association. The CCP's methods of directly recruiting the workers and farmers meant that the FCP had to work in the open, and this would quickly lead to its final downfall. In March 1931, the Japanese police arrested their first member of the FCP, a man named Chun Chun Mu and found documents from the CCP in his house. The Japanese authorities correctly guessed that they had a Communist Party cell growing amongst the Formosans, and they embarked on a cleansing. They traced the FCP's individual members using detective work and confiscated documents, systematically arresting member after member. She was among the first captured in June 26. The last leading cadre, Su Xin, was captured September 13th in the industrial city of Ruodong, Ilan. They were all sentenced to many years in prison. Nothing more would be done until World War II ended. While She and fellow comrades at Tai Xiaochen would return to what is now Taiwan Island to foment cap communist revolution, these actions would be as members of the CCP rather than as a separate FCP. The FCP as an independent communist party thus ceased to exist. All right, everyone, have a great weekend. Happy July 4th. Um, enjoy.